All right, in this video, we're going to look at um, some of the proofs or the reasoning behind some of these circle theorems that we're learning. Uh, we've learned a lot about arcs and angles, and I've kind of handed you the theorems, but I kind of want you to know why. And so I want us to start with, with this theorem. We called it theorem 10. It's the inscribed angle property. It's the idea that an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arcs. So you may be saying, hey, that's cool, but why is that the case? So I'm going to do in this video what I call lazy proofs. So they're not going to be um, perfect proofs or formal proofs, but just enough so you can kind of get a grasp on why this is the case. So in order to illustrate this idea, let's draw a particular inscribed angle where one of the, the rays is a diameter of the circle, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw central angle, and we know that if I have an arc, we defined the measure of an arc to be the same as the central angle. That was a definition. We don't have to prove it, okay? And so what I want to do is by constructing this diagram this way, what you see is that we've created a triangle right here. I can kind of shade it. You can see this is the triangle that we're talking about. And I would ask you, what kind of triangle is it? And hopefully what you'd say is you'd say, hey, that's an isosceles triangle because that's a radius and that's a radius. Okay. Now, think about what you know about isosceles triangles. What we learned back in the day, and you may have called it a few different things, you may have called it the isosceles triangle theorem or the base angles theorem, but if you have an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent. Meaning if I have this isosceles triangle with these two legs being congruent, you have that this is congruent to this. So that means that this angle right here is also x. So these are our base angles, they both have a measure of x. Now we're gonna use one last kind of theorem or property that we, that we learned earlier this year. Sorry, I'll go ahead and label this. I call that the base angles theorem, base angles theorem. But now let's use a different idea, and one that relates this angle to these two angles. And I'm not gonna prove this other theorem right now, but we learned this idea that if I have a triangle, and I'll label those angles as one, two, and three, the exterior angle theorem states that this angle that's exterior to the triangle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. In other words, in this little diagram I have over here, we have that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. That's the exterior angle, angle theorem, okay? Now, that's kind of our background knowledge. We have our base angles theorem and our exterior angles theorem, which got us to here. Now, if I apply the exterior angles theorem to this diagram, we have our exterior angle y, because it's exterior to this triangle right here, and we know that it's equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. In other words, because of this exterior angles theorem, we know that y is equal to x plus x. Well, x plus x is 2x, and remember what our goal is. Our goal is to get here. So if I just took this and solve for x by um, dividing by 2 on each side, you would get that x equals y over 2, which could also be expressed as half y. So that's kind of our lazy man's proof for um, what we know about inscribed angles or the inscribed angle theorem. Let's look at this. So this is theorem 11. We call it the opposite angle property. It was the idea that if I have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, that these opposite angles are going to be congruent. And so let's just kind of do our lazy proof here. So this one, I've just drawn a quadrilateral, and I'm going to introduce a couple more variables here. I want to take this arc right here, and I want us to label that arc as, um, let's label it as x. And then I want to take this arc over here, the remaining arc of our triangle, and I want us to label it as y. Now, let's think about a couple of relationships that we know here. For one, we know that between x and y, that is the entire circle. Okay, so one thing that we know, oops, is that x plus y equals, and I'm trying to be color coded here, equals 360. This arc plus this arc would be 360. Now, using some other things we know, we see that this um, angle A right here is actually inscribed to the arc that we've labeled 
as y degrees. So if this arc is y degrees, we know that a equals one half y. So we have that a equals one half y. In other words, if you knew how many degrees this was, you'd divide it by two to find this angle. And then we also know that b is one half x. In the same way that angle a is inscribed to this arc, angle b is inscribed to this arc. Now, what we have is we knew that x plus y equals 360. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and copy, copy that down right here. We know that x plus y equals 360. So if I were to multiply both sides of this equation by 1 half, I could say that 1 half x plus 1 half y equals 180. And I think that kind of follows. That makes sense. I just took this equation and divided it by 2. Well, now what we know is we know that 1 half y is really the same thing as a. So I can substitute it in. And we knew that 1 half x is really the same thing as b. So I can substitute that in. And voila, there's our theorem that we were trying to prove. Next, let's prove this one. We're, we're, we're proving this theorem about chords that intersect inside a circle. And what we learned that theorem was is that to find the measure of angle 1, I would take this arc plus this arc, and I would divide it by 2. So I've kind of labeled them a little more simply. I've labeled the arcs as A and B with the angle that we're looking for as X. So we're trying to prove that X equals 1 half A plus B. To, to do this proof, I'm going to construct a segment, meaning I'm just going to kind of make up one for the purpose of this proof. And I'm going to put it right there, okay? And what, what I, the reason I did this is it's going to help us uh, express a few values. So if, if I think of this angle right here as an inscribed angle, you can see that this angle is inscribed to this arc, okay? So if this arc has a measure of B, we know that this angle is going to have a measure of 1 half B. So that is 1 half B. I realize that's getting kind of small there. And then the same thing here. I've created another angle here that's going to be inscribed to this arc. So if this arc has a measure of A degrees, we know that this angle is going to have a measure of 1, one half A. So we have this little triangle that we've drawn, and we have an angle of a half B and an angle of a half A. Now, I wonder if we can express angle X in terms of these two angles. Well, in a previous proof, we used that exterior angles theorem. And just to kind of remind you what the exterior angles theorem says, it says that if I have an angle that's exterior to the triangle, like angle one in this little diagram, we know it's going to be equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Here, x is our exterior angle. These two would be our remote interior angles. So therefore, I could say that my exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Now keep in mind, we're pretty much there. I mean, it's pretty much just algebra is the difference between what we're trying to prove and what we have here. But just know that um, maybe one way to look at it is I could factor a one-half out of both of those. But basically, there, there's your proof. There's our proof for it. And that's why x equals half the sum of those two arcs. Now this is going to be our last one for this video, and so we call this theorem 13, and uh, we've got our, our secants here. And what we learned in the previous video, oops, to back up, is that this arc minus this arc divided by 2 would give us this angle outside the circle. And so we're going to kind of do our, our, our what I keep calling a lazy proof to prove this. And for this one, uh, I'm going to do another construction. I'm going to construct this segment right here. Okay, I'm going to construct that segment right there. And by constructing that segment, let's think about what we know. I've created an inscribed angle right here. And this inscribed angle is inscribed to this arc that we've labeled with A. So that means that this angle has a measure of 1 half A. And then we've created another angle right here that's inscribed to this arc. You can see I've got this arc and then this would be my angle inscribed to it. And so that one is going to have a measure of 1 half B, because it's half the measure of the arc that it's inscribed to. Now, I feel like a little bit of a broken record, but we're going to use that exterior angle theorem again. 
So if we do that exterior angle theorem again, I probably should have just copied it down, but we know that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. In this case, if I'm considering this my big triangle, we know that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. X plus one half B equals one half A. So let's copy that down. The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. And then if I have that, all I'm doing, remember, here's the statement that we've created. We're trying to make it look a little bit more like that. So I'm just going to subtract one half B from each side of my equation to isolate the X. And we get that X equals one half A minus one half B. And just like the last problem, if I were to factor out that one half, that's your theorem. So um, that's all the, the, the little kind of mini proofs or lazy proofs that I wanted to show you because I really feel like many of these proofs really kind of wrap in and spiral in some of the properties and theorems that we've learned earlier this year.